you were the word at the beginning one with God the Lord most high you're hidden glory in creation now revealed in you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my what a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us But Jesus, you brought My sin was great, your love was greater What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Christ, my King What a wonderful name it is Nothing could
of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. gathered in this sacred place to give God thanks for the life of Randolph Sion Clark. Let us now receive his body for burial. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Randolph Sion Clark for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Randolph. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn, Give us faith to see in death the gates of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. The hymn 427 through all the changing scenes of life.
kind of be seated. We now have a musical tribute, I Don't Know About Tomorrow, by Yvonne Wilson, which will be followed by the eulogy by Stanley Clark. Miss Wilson. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. You will notice on your sheets, I'm supposed to be singing, I don't know about tomorrow. But I have changed the solo, the tribute, and I'll briefly explain why. John, as I fondly called him, was my neighbor. And there was a time that I was in difficulty. And my husband was not at home to help me with flowing water running all around the house. And I called on John. And John came running and actually showed me. He turned off the water and he showed me what to do. So I've changed my tribute today to if. I can help somebody. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can change. Somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody when they're going wrong, then my living shall.
Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. And thank you for joining in the celebration of the life of John Randolph Clark, who was my big brother, minder, hero, champion, and strong tower. So I start at the beginning. John was born on the 7th of May, 1932, in the village of Spring Farm, St. Thomas, Barbados. He started his schooling at Hillby McSchool until the age of 12 stroke 13. Our parents then moved to Bushall, St. Michael, during the closing stages of World War II. He continued and finished his schooling at Roebuck's Moravian School on Roebuck Street, St. Michael, at the age of 14. At this age of 14 stroke 15, he went on to learn the woodwork trades in carpentry, joinery, and coopering. Later on, he moved to store portering, which he did until 1956, when he joined many of his countrymen who were migrating to the UK to work on the railway. On arrival, he was trained as a crane operator, which created a dispute with the white workforce who went on strike. Management refused to back down and he continued to work at that job. Sometime after, he applied for a training to become a guard on passenger trains. In the meantime, he got married and started raising his family. He also learned plumbing and house decorating. John was very busy during these other jobs while still working for British Rail. You could not fault his industry. He was to change his jobs yet again. This time, he went to work for British Airways as a baggage handler until his retirement and his eventual return here to Barbados. John was old school. He was a no-nonsense man. He believed in the old-fashioned discipline, no sparing the rod and spoiling the child on his watch. He believed in stick and carrot in the right proportion. He taught his children the value of hard work and the dignity of labour, good manners, right from wrong, and the consequences thereof, and to be law-abiding. His children have benefited from that upbringing as they have been successful in their various fields of endeavour. He was a church-going, <coughs> pardon me, he was church-going and a member of this very church and also a sixth for some time, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> before his sudden passing. If I were asked to define his character, I would have to quote something from my Boy Scout days and I don't know if I got it right, but it's something like this. It goes, trusty, loyal, helpful, brotherly, courteous, kind, obedient, smiling, thrifty, pure in body and mind. All of them are more. I'm fairly certain that there are people here today who can attest to that. He was always willing, able to help people less fortunate than himself, and many times went out of his way to render assistance. To all and sundry, he was a good Samaritan. He was a good person, good being the operative word. To sum him up, I can't think of no better phrase than hardworking, God-fearing. They don't make them like that anymore. He will be missed by his family here and abroad and all of those who came to know and love him. And so with a very... <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. With a very heavy heart, we say a farewell and goodbye to God. Rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank Amen. you. Thank you. Please stand for the collect. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Randolph. And we pray that heaven opened to him the gates of larger life. You will receive him more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory 
of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Can you be seated as we invite Miss Kathy Aline to read the first lesson? Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose under the heavens, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to plot that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. Here ends the reading. The congregation will remain seated as the choir chants Psalm 121. We now invite Brother Arthur to read the second lesson. A reading from St. John Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way you, and the way you know. Thomas and said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou art a ghost, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me except by the Father. Here ends the gospel reading. Precious Lord, take me home. Precious Lord, take my hand. It's the title of the next hymn. I speak to you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If a few weeks ago someone would be saying to me that, my friend, I would be standing here to say goodbye. In a different way, I would say no. Usually, Mr. Clark will meet me down at the back after worship. And he would just give me a little chat and then he would say, I'll see you next time. And I was the most surprised person to hear that he had passed. As I prepared for this service today, and my mind and thoughts were drawn to the reading from Ecclesiastes. I was made aware once again that there is a time for everything under the sun. And from that passage of scripture, life seems to be a mixture of good and bad, love and hate and joy and sorrow, life and death. 
And when we look at it, things seem to go well for us at one moment. Then somehow in the next moment, it is matched by an equal amount of misfortune. If this is all there was to life, it would seem like an unending roller coaster. Yet in that same passage, a few verses down, we find these words. God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has put eternity in their hearts. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away. God has made everything beautiful in its time. And my brothers and sisters, as we gather here this evening to say goodbye to one who once lived and worked among us, we reflect on the scriptures that there's a time for everything. And this is sometimes very hard for us to accept. And it becomes even harder around this time when families and friends meet together to celebrate Christ's birth. Human beings are will gladly accept the nice, happy parts of life. But when we speak about a time to mourn, and when in the midst of all our celebration, we have to come to say goodbye to one of our loved ones who have died, we find that hard to accept. But this evening, with the wisdom that the Lord has given to us, we are able to understand this reality and to accept that there is a time for And at a time like this, we need to remember that in God's order, there's a time to weep. And tears, Tears are the precious healing waters of the soul. For when we allow tears to flow, it helps us to understand or to heal or to accept the fact that there is a time when death will come to each one of us. But the scriptures tells us that weeping may be for a night, but joy will come in the morning. And as usual, I'm still trying to work on it. I do not always hear everything that is said about our departed, but I did hear that he was someone who gave, someone who was willing to reach out and touch. And so these are the memories which will sustain us as we go forward. And even if life may seem like a roller coaster, for one moment we are happy and the next moment we are sad, for the people of God, we do not live our lives on a roller coaster, but we accept that there's a time for us to journey on this earth and as the gospel said, one day he will come again to receive us to himself. So yes, it is hard for us to accept the fact that there's a void in our hearts. There's a space at the table. You cannot call on him again. I don't know what will happen with Arthur because Arthur and him were tight and um, but you know what there are memories that we can hold on to we also know that for those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ that one day everything will be made beautiful and we will meet again 
And that is why, my brothers and sisters, it is important how we live our lives and what we do. I could not see the lady who sang, but she said he was there to her rescue. Are we making life beautiful for each other? Are we living a life that is pleasing to God and to each other? Yes, there is a time. What are we doing with that time? As we come like the faithful saints of yesteryears, as we come into these sacred walls, as many have done, it is in our sorrow that we turn to comfort, for comfort and for strength from the Word of God. And this evening, we are being reminded there is a time for everything under the sun. And therefore, it is important for us, as the psalmist said, to use our time wisely. So even as you mourn this evening, even as you remember and you reflect this evening, I want to ask you again, what are you doing with your time? Are you using it for the good of others? Are you using it as the Creator would want you to, to give him the honor and the glory? Our brother was the sexton at one time, and therefore he would have opened the doors. And the scriptures tell us that blessed are those who are the doorkeepers. When was the last time? you visited these sacred walls. Over the past holidays, I've met a lot of persons who've been coming out to worship as usual around the Christmas time. And they say, well, you know, Rev, COVID. But I'm coming back. And I said, we will welcome you. But when are you coming back? How are you coming back? Make sure that don't happen. I have some time. Do we really have time? There is a time for everything under the sun. And today, as we come to say goodbye, as we draw near to God and ask him to sustain us and help us during this our grieving moment, God reminds us in the scripture, in those wise words, there is a time for everything under the sun. And a reminder for us to use that time wisely. <clears throat> Comforting words for us from the gospel that says, do not let our hearts be troubled. Yes, we are grieving, but in this time, I will walk with you. I will sustain you. But I also want you to know that when I go away, I will come again and receive you to myself. He has come and he is receiving our brother to himself. The question for us, would we be ready when he comes to receive us to himself? As we say goodbye then, our friend has given to us one of life's precious gifts, a parting gift. 
You've ever been somewhere and when you're leaving, someone say to you, here look, take something with you. And at this time, it's probably a piece of cake, it may be a piece of ham, it might be a bread, it may be something to take with you. It may be a gift so that you will remember where you've been. And our brother has given to us a gift. The gift to reflect once again on our own life, on the frailty of life, and the importance of using our time wisely. So to the family, even as you mourn, your dad, your uncle, your good friend, your brother, whatever is your relationship, he has given to you a precious gift. The opportunity to hear scripture, the opportunity to sit and reflect about the things that are important and the things that you need to do to make sure that you spend your time wisely. So right now, I invite you to open your hearts to the Lord and find safety even now in your grief. Give your aching hearts to him. Say to him, yes, Lord, I need you to sustain me now in this time. And yes, he will hear you. But also during this time to reflect on how you are proceeding with this life journey how you are living the seasons of life and to make sure that you are using it wisely we give god thanks for the life and work of our brother here in this church and we pray now that god would receive him to himself and that those of us who are left behind may find peace and comfort in words of scripture and that we too may prepare ourselves for our time. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. I invite you now to join in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During the singing of the next sermon, the offered offering will be collected for the work of the church. Hymn 496, And Can It Be?
Neil, as we have the intercessionary praise. Let us pray. The response is, hear us, Lord. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion, in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear. <clears throat> May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection died to sin and rise to the newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Amen. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn, a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Yes. Hear us, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend it to you, our brother Randolph Sion, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Please stand for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Randolph, with your saints. 
sorrow and pain on the more, neither sight but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, form of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our sound. Alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. May sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Our Father, Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant Randolph. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy. In the blessed rest of the everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn, number 433.
We now have the Dunk Dimitis. of the inclemency of the weather permit the body here so that when we go to the graveside we then just proceed with the burial. Every one that the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the records of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother Randolph Sion, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Randolph Sion and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still lift the spirit of those who die in the Lord, and with whom of the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good example of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, 
Now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience. Not sorry as those without hope, but a thankful remembrance of your great goodness and a joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. And let thy perfection shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace.
It is well with my soul. Our first hymn at the graveside.
And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Or next hymn, O Lord my God. in the role.
in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. <coughs> There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see. Final hymn at the graveside. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away.
Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, that this your servant who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in the sea of peace. According to your promises, grant to him and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen.
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, Lord.